we are live welcome to jessica jones season two thoughts so happy thursday everyone i am personally thankful that i'm not american and no one is going to resent me if i don't feel like eating the driest blandest bird to be farmed for food if i did feel like celebrating i could go with the classics have chicken or go slightly more unusual and have duck but turkey not a single reason for me to have that so the let's see yeah spoilers for everything mcu leading up to and including this season i will not be spoiling anything that came out in the mcu after this season so the remaining yeah i'll just very briefly go over the order of the remaining marvel netflix shows so Luke Cage Season 2, Iron Fist Season 2, Daredevil Season 3, Punisher Season 2, and Jessica Jones Season 3. And it will continue to be roughly every other week I'll do one of these videos. And yeah, like I said in my Season 1 vlog for Jessica Jones, I have a lot of empathy since she is a rape survivor. Please keep that in mind when I criticize her behavior. In general, I sympathize with most characters on this show. I have seen some say that Jessica Jones is unlikable, bland, dry. You know, Jessica Jones, the traumatized rape survivor with PTSD. If you can't empathize with someone like that, I implore you, work on that part of yourself. People like that exist in the real world, and they deserve our empathy. And, yeah, you know, so many female leads are called unlikable for traits and actions that male leads are considered complex for. Breaking Bad, Sopranos, Game of Thrones, Dexter, Mad Men, probably others have male leads like that. And, yeah, you know, Jessica Jones, both in season one and season two, actually, you know, goes for that and, and most of the time reaches it. You know, Jessica is not a role model. She's not trying to be. She's been dealt a bad hand. You know, she has a responsibility since, you know, in, in season one, it was Kilgrave in this season. It's, you know, first IGH and later when she realizes that Alyssa is her mother, her mother. And yeah, you know, sometimes she does some rotten things. And sometimes she fails even when doing her best, but at least she's trying I'm really glad that Rebecca de Mornay is still acting. She shows when playing Dorothy that she still has talent. I, I think she was also the one playing the role in the, the first season. I regret not bringing it up there. So, if you have a show where the first season is very focused, then it can be really effective if the second season, or at least one of the follow-up seasons, really goes and toys with what is set up in the first season. Maybe characters that have a lot of power lose that power, which, you know, yeah, in this season, Jerry is about to lose all the power she has. Jessica has both her business and the, you know, living area threatened. Uh, let's see. And, yeah, a, sh a short list of shows that do this, not all in Season 2. Prison Break, Dexter, Alias, various Star Trek shows, Burn Notice, Charmed, Two and a Half Men, Lost, Daredevil, and yeah, now Jessica Jones. Now, now I can confirm also Jessica Jones. I realize some people have known this for years. Yeah, shows like Prison Break and Alias kind of reinvented themselves pretty much every season. So, yeah. But, yeah, I really appreciate, like, you know, for all the problems that Jessica had in the first season, there was never a real, like... There was never another P.I. trying to outmaneuver her. And, you know, yeah, the, the, ah, uh, what's it called? Um, super in the building. <laughs> yeah, there's more than one super in the building. Not only Oscar in 6F. But yeah, Oscar wants her gone. And, yeah, so that brings us to... Jessica Jones, Season 2, Episode 1, Start, a.k.a. Start at the Beginning. And... There we go. So... Yeah, this is a really good uh, season opener. Like the... Um, yeah, like Season 1 also had... And let's see. 
you can get anything delivered in New York City if you walk down the right alley. I take cash or checks, still not a wellspring of sympathy for her clients on account of her own trauma. And the, the you know, client is, you know, I, th I think offers double or something like that, you know, offers a lot of money if Jessica is willing to kill the, the pizza delivery guy. You know, she now has to deal with people who don't understand you know, she's not looking to be someone who goes around killing people, uh, you know, f for the good cause, you know, which, I mean, to be fair to her client, you know, she maybe doesn't, it's not exactly unusual for MCU titular characters to go around killing people, you know, so, yeah. And I really like how she handles it. You know, she tells Rafi everything, and he runs off. And the yeah, the client is mad at Jessica, and she threatens, grabs a pizza, and Trish is doing a performance of that Patsy song. And you know, we actually hear more of it this time than you know. We're not only hearing the first few lines, actually. I know it's not a big deal, but I did wonder a little why when when later when we hear the song I Want Your Cray Cray, it's like apparently there's no verses, it's just the chorus over and over. Maybe they really like maybe the maybe the song lyric budget was maxed out with the, the Patsy song here at the in the season opener. And, yeah, she's performing at a kid's birthday party in return for the hospital file. And the people who hired her are big fans, talk about how their daughter loves watching the DVDs, even Christmas specials. Not knowing that that's actually something that bothers her, that that was part of her life. And we see a gay couple, couple that has adopted great representation. Yeah, and actually, it goes... Doesn't it... Ah, uh, wait. Crap, I forget if it's... If, if it also goes beyond race and if, if the or if the kid looks like them yeah and you know the the you know one, one of them is like well excuse me for being a fan you know one of them gets upset that she like I think she says shit when the kids can hear it it's like um yeah, and doesn't one of them say she's much? She's so much nicer in the show, or something like that. Just, yeah, and yeah, you know, Jess still feels pain due to Kilgrave. It didn't end it to kill him, you know, and that's sadly also true in real life. You know, we we there's so much American media that tells us that if someone does something significantly bad to you, then the way to feel better is to hurt them really badly, maybe even, you know, kill them. And that's just not true. The catharsis there is just, yeah. So I really appreciate the, the show, because that was, you know, I'm, I'm not saying that as a criticism of season one, but season one basically did, you know, it ends with her killing Kilgrave. And, you know, it, it would, if, if the, if that was the only thing that was accomplished, you know, then it, it maybe wouldn't feel like enough of a, of, of closure, you know, at least to people like myself who really want it explored that it's not enough, you know, it doesn't, and, and sometimes it makes you feel worse, you know, the studies say, I'm not speaking from personal experience. And the, yeah, actually, yeah, season one ended with her opening up to Trish. And in this season, you know, Trish is the one who kills someone who causes trauma. And it costs her her relationship with Jess. So that's a good sort of, there's a, there's a, not, not like poetic justice, but a sort of, like, 
yeah, what's the word? There's this, um, there's this twisted kind of, like, you know, I mean, Kilgrave would probably, if he were still alive, he would think that was hilarious, you know, or the, or the Joker, you know, it's that kind of thing. It's it's this really messed up kind of, yeah. Let's see. And, you know, Trish has found out more about IGH, what they did to Jess, and the door she went through locked behind her. The scene ends on her saying to Jess, who has left, I'm not as strong as you are, which is, of course, a theme for this season. Which, you know, if if they did that, like, a lot of times, it would be like, okay, we get it. But, you know, here it's basically, it's stating the theme. And, let's see. Jessica sees some potential clients, chugs multiple I. I'm thinking Red Bulls or something. Malcolm won't let her fire him. Keeps thinking something she says is a lesson. Let's see. Yeah, Price Chang tries to absorb her operation. I gotta say, I was a little surprised. Pam has no screen time in this entire season. But, yeah, you know... At the end, in, in her last scene of season one, she realized Jerry used her, you know, the, the way she uses everyone, you know, and, and, and it is that thing, you know, several of the scenes that Pam and Jerry share in season one are about, you know, Pam is really, really in love with Jerry, really attracted to her because of how powerful Jerry is, and... It's basically, you know, and, and then once Jerry t tricks her into, ah, I feel bad, but I don't remember uh, Jerry's wife's name, but yeah, you know, let's, let's, I'm almost certain that was what, it, yeah, there's, I, I don't remember all the details, but certainly Pam got locked up for, uh, you know, and, and she, she confronted Jerry, uh, you know, and said, you you knew this was going to happen, you know, and it's that thing of she was smart enough to see it before, but she was not emotionally ready to see it before. So now that she is emotionally ready, she completely sees through. So, yeah, throughout this season, you know, Jerry is struggling with these. Let's see. And, you know, she has ALS and it is... Uh, you know, yeah, and actually, yeah, and at the end of the season, she's, like, doing these things that early in the season, she was like, I, that's not serious enough for me, you know, she's like, if there isn't a cure, I don't care, and, you know, yeah, by the end of the season, she's taking the medication, she's doing the, the physical exercises and such that are supposed to hold it off, so, yeah, she's going to keep fighting. And Jess spies on Price, who realizes she's there, and does, like, a wave or something, and she's pissed off about it. That was pretty funny. Let's see. And Malcolm's like, what's in the box? Well, if pop culture has taught me anything, that's got to be a dead family member. And, you know, then Jess is like, my family's ashes. I was joking, although I guess that is that is probably, the, like, the episode is making that joke itself, isn't it? And Cheng stole their client, sent his life story to, you know, say, no, 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 check up on me. I'm fine. You you can't find anything on me. And she steals one of his clients, which it, it was pretty funny with, you know, the the dog. I, I forget the name. And then, you know, the guy says to Cheng, you said he wasn't there. No, no, no. I said I couldn't get, get past the boyfriend to check if he was there, and she's like, well, I didn't ask, I don't need to, you know. And Cheng provokes Jess, who hits him until she realizes what she's doing, lets herself be arrested, though we know she could break free. Resisting arrest will only make things worse. 
probation court ordered anger management and Trish bailed her out. I I like that, you know, I th honestly based on this episode, I thought Griffin was going to be in the entire season, but he basically disappears once Trish off camera breaks off the engagement. But yeah, you know, at that point, he has basically served his purpose. You know, Trish even says, I didn't want to be with him. I wanted to be him. So, yeah, but I, I quite liked, you know, he makes some really black jokes with uh, dark comedy jokes with the with Jessica, you know, and, you know, let's see, was it that? Yeah, he, he says, no, 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 don't worry about us. We were just at this illiterate we were just gonna help illiterate kids or something like that you know and and trish is like come on she's just been arrested she doesn't want these kind of jokes right now and you know after a couple of more lines jess says go i don't want to be responsible for stupid kids too and griffin is like see i told you she was in you know she did want these kinds of jokes and let's see and yeah trish is with griffin and both of them get recognized by fans even when bailing out jess and both of them personally downplay their image you know he like she she says that oh he's you know he's a big deal because of all the you know television stuff and he's like i was stupid enough to go to war zone you know so yeah and Jerry is the one who got Price Chang to try to hire Jessica since they had a falling out. Did not go well. And we see that Wizard really does have super speed. And he's trying to get away from Jessica, so he throws a box to slow her down, not knowing it's her family's ashes. And the chase ends in his death. Jessica believes it was murder, not an accident. And people see, including Oscar... Yeah, and we, you know, she goes to IGH and has f some flashbacks, including to, you know, this person with a monstrous looking face, and we later realize that was actually her mother. Let's see, that brings us to episode two, aka Freak Accident. And, yeah, you know, Griffin answers Trish's phone. I appreciate he does try to help her and spoons with Trish afterwards. So it's it's very clear that he does care about Trish. And we see Jess is still having casual sex. Let's see. And, you know, once the guy realizes she has powers, you know, he calls her a freak. It, you know, the the... One of the themes of this season is definitely how people respond to powerful women and treat them and, and such. And yeah, Jess approaches the house, is greeted in a friendly manner, finds out Kozlov is dead. She's assumed to be there to pay her respects. And since there's information to be gathered, she doesn't excuse herself and leave immediately, which would obviously be the most sensitive and classy thing to do given this misunderstanding. Let's see. Yeah, and Jess remembers the service for her own family, how Dorothy yelled at her for not crying. You know, I've seen that French film, and I think I'm just keep it A and B. I'm gonna need caffeine for that. Could I have a coffee? Yes, ma'am. Ah, inspiring actor. Fads fade. I quite like that. I, I've, yeah, alliteration and like, just, yeah, big fan. And Jerry keeps ignoring calls, then responds positively to a prostitute. A lot of people do feel a rise in sex drive in response to believing they might die soon. And despite how careful Jerry usually is with her personal life, she actually does invite in this prostitute and two others. 
And Jessica actually does fight the guy in a wheelchair. And she does get some information out of him, namely a name. And it's, once again, Simpson is involved. And the, the, uh, what was the, um, yeah, I, that, that whole thing was very messed up. And I really appreciate that, like, you know, the show doesn't make it out that we're, we're not supposed to laugh at this person in a wheelchair. You know, we're supposed to be shocked that Jessica is actually willing to, yeah, hit a guy in a wheelchair. And Malcolm was in bed with someone, which sets up that that's, you know, she, late, later in the season, Jessica points out that's, you know, that's what he, that's his drug now. You know, he it's no longer the, um... I want to say it was heroin before, you know, and, and yeah, you know, if he, if you asked, he'd say, no, 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 I'm, I'm not drinking. I am, you know, I'm out of bed on time and this whole thing, you know, but yeah, he can't even remember the names of, of the women that, yeah. With great power comes great mental illness, which is also a theme of the season. Give him hell, Emil, as long as he doesn't have to make a physical appearance. He's very camera shy, by which I mean the budget didn't include Mongoose and Mongoose Wrangler. So sound effects is all he'll be. I, you know what, I just realized, I haven't said, I love this season, so me making these jokes. I'm not saying that this, you know, these are actual problems. I just, you know, I'm very, very used to joking about things, including stuff I love. And usually, you know, when I talk about a movie, I usually start the video by saying whether or not it was a movie that I really loved or not. So, yeah, just realized I did not do that for this one. And, yeah, Jerry partying with three other women. You know, one of them, the prostitute, she picked up and later confirmed the others are also prostitutes. So, you know, maybe the, the first prostitute, you know, if Jerry said to her, do you have some friends? Maybe they drove to pick them up, or maybe, like, the 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 first prostitute called them and gave them the address or something. I can't put into words how glad I am that this is not filmed in male gaze. The scene is not there for people attracted to women to get off on it. It's to show Jerry in a situation we've not seen her in before. You know, like I mentioned earlier, she usually does not take risks like this, and it's you know, Price Cheng calls her out on it, you know, if he was su sufficiently unhappy with her, maybe he'll tell the, her partners at the firm, which could worsen things for her there. You know, he just wants a good lawyer. That might mean he gets to be a priority client from one of the other lawyers if they manage to push Jerry out, especially Linda, who clearly hates Jerry. When it comes to Malcolm, I know that Jessica liked his brain better on drugs. Me personally, I do prefer him this way. And Jess and Oscar argue. We find out he's in a custody battle. Where custody battle worried he'll lose the kid. And I really appreciate, like, they managed to, you know, neither of them go so far that it's impossible for the show to make us want them to be together later, uh, you know, which I would not at all have guessed at this point in this season. I thought he was going to be a season-long antagonist. And, you know, she actually, yeah, when she realizes, like, she, she goes to his place, knocks on the door, and he, you know, she's like, when I brought the police to your doorstep, I did not know that you were in a custody battle, you know, which that is a very significant, you know, that's part of why he's willing to forgive her because he just straight up, she did not know. She thought that this would be a perfectly fine thing to do. And, you know, if you're not like, yeah, actually, no, never mind. I, a lot of people would not want the police brought to their door, but she is someone who 
works like she she's just shy of crossing the line so she has to be careful like if she does something that really gets you know that really causes a lot of problems for the police they're you know they're gonna take more of an active interest and sometimes she does break the law just stay the hell away from us you Stay the hell away from me. Yeah, it's worth a try. And we see Wizard tried to contact Trish. And someone posted on her board, Douglas Adams is an underrated philosopher IMO. Agreed. I guess she did a show talking about Douglas Adams. So, you know, for sure, Trish has done some really great things. And... Yeah, we find out that what Trish wanted Malcolm to do was record as she confronts Max about molesting her when she was 15. You know, it's really good that now in the era of Me Too, this kind of thing is getting out. And it is, you know, like we already knew from season one that there were some really bad, like, Patsy... Ah, Trish... In, in the Patsy stage of her career, was, you know, mercurial. And, yeah, this is, you know, it's it's not the only reason, but it is a major reason. You know, and, and no wonder that she and her mother, you know, for a while there was no contact between them. And, you know, in this season we see Trish keeps asking her mother for help. You know, even though the the... Yeah, despite all the all the abuse. Now let's see. And I I quite liked you know when when Jess refers to you know Griffin talks about why he's concerned and she refers to it as scroty sense. Now let's see and. Jessica calls Dorothy to ask what she said to Trish. We hear that she still has the It's Patsy theme song as her ringtone. And Malcolm confronts Max, breaks his nose. I thought that might make it more difficult for them to get what they wanted from him, but that ultimately that isn't really the case. Instead, it seems like they're exploring as a theme that violence might feel cathartic, but it doesn't necessarily solve the problem. And, yeah, you know, in real life, there are very few situations that violence can actually solve beyond the very immediate situation. You have to go for the root or it will happen again. And Trish shot Simpson in the leg and raises the gun to shoot him in the face. And we see later she got him tied up, presumably by threatening to shoot him in the face. She's not screwing around. And Jerry is confronted by... Price and some way the prostitutes. And I, I like the detail that, like, before this, they were kind of lounging. Like, I I wouldn't really characterize it as them, like, taking advantage of her. They, you know, if, like, she asked them to come in there and the, yeah, you know. But, but yeah, they're, like, they're relaxing. They made, you know, the whole Mikasa is Sukasa. But the moment that Jerry says, get out, like, none of them argue. None of them are like, you asked us in here, you know, they, they know that, because I feel like that's also a theme this season, you know, people who don't have a very high status in society get treated really badly. So, you know, here we see it with the prostitutes, later we see it with Inez, the unhoused woman, you know, so, so yeah. And, the mo you know, it turns out the monster was not after Trish, but Simpson. And I was just about to say I was happy to see Simpson again, because I, I did really like his, you know, the, the things with him in, in Season 1. Especially how it started with this completely different, like, he he's mind-controlled, and then he just wants to see, did he actually kill Trish? That brings us to episode three, Soul Survivor.
and Jess tells Trish she considers suicide after her family died. And Trish wants to keep what Simpson had to protect her. I really love when Jess stops carrying and lets go and Trish can't carry it herself because it's so heavy. Like these these really subtle things. Can I have another pillow? You have seven pillows. And yeah, you know, we see Linda Chow has no sympathy for Jerry. And it is sadly true of a lot of women in business, you know. Basically, the, the fact that it's so difficult for women to succeed means that a lot of women, a lot of professional women get really... Like, they, they start fighting other women when patriarchy is the problem. And... Let's... Malcolm talks to the landlord who mistakes him for hitting him, hitting on him. Just knew landlord was gay, meant for it to happen. And, you know, he Malcolm is like, the next time you're going to objectify me, tell me first. And she, she just, you know, dryly, snarkily points out, that's not really how objectification works, you know. Is yeah, the the um, <laughs> and and she would know because she's been objectified. So yeah, and Jess realizes Maury left the computer having to be logged into, but he's also one of those people who has both the username and the password on a post-it on the monitor. So yeah, and Trish talks to Maury, offering favors like last time they spoke. What are you doing? Calling the super. Clever. A lot of supers wouldn't react, but she knows that he doesn't like cops. Obviously, he's not going to want to risk that since he knows she knows. You know, like, obviously, it's not like if she just calls to calls the cops and are like, my super refuses to, to, to grab a plunger and, and fix my, bat, my, my toilet, they're not going to take that seriously. But... If she calls the cops and says, like, I'm hearing screaming from the room that my super lives in, you better come help, you know, some kind of thing, you know. And we know she's not above that kind of, you know, she, she's not going to, he doesn't know for sure that she's above that kind of thing. She's not going to do that to him because he has a kid and he's worried about custody. But, you know, she has done, like, in season one, she basically weaponized racism with Malcolm, you know, and, and even though he was still on drugs, he called her out for it, you know, so, yeah. And, yeah, Jess goes into Oscar's place, and Vito is really excited about his Captain America action figure, made a new shield for it, which is, like, so, so, if I, under, if I remember correctly, it's something about, like, magnetic, just, yeah, really, really clever, and... And Oscar catches her in there, and she realizes he forced a green card for Keo. And, you know, he points out, no, 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 I have those pictures because I painted a, uh, you know, I, I painted a painting, and I can prove that. And just, yeah, that was a quite clever. Let's see. Yeah, uh... We see Griffin do some shady... Yeah, I'll, I'll talk about that when it's revealed. What the... Yeah. And, you know, Jerry tells Jess about ALS. She thought her power would protect her. And I really love her line, If I believed in God, I would say she had a shit sense of humor. Which also makes Jessica chuckle. I love that even though Jerry doesn't believe in God, she's certain if there was a God... She would be female. Damn straight. God is a woman, man, with two ends in man. I really love the choice that despite how many awful things these two have said to each other over years of begrudging mutual respect, because both are among the best at what they do, this is the rare instance where Jessica does not say awful things to Jerry. She lets Jerry say what she is there to say, what she what she has to say, knowing how difficult it is for Jerry to open up to Jessica like that. 
you know, she she never once says something like, oh, you deserve this, or, you know, and we know she really doesn't think much of her. There was that great line, I think it was near the end of season one. Y yeah, she called and said, you have to be a defense attorney for this person who was mind-controlled by Kilgrave into killing, and she says something like, you are a slimy ooze that just, you know, just really, really nasty description. And Jerry is like, does this have a point, you know, and just, and, and just, you know, gets to the point of just, yeah. Let's see. Yeah, and, and we see that the, you know, they, they find the, the skull and, and our, oh, actually, yeah, never mind, that's out of order, but anyway, you know, the, the doctor calls the, the show, and they arrange a meeting, and, you know, yeah, basically she was going to kill Trish, so that no one would find out about IGH, and instead Jessica shows up, and the, the, let's see... I, I really, you know, that scene, when you think back to it, once you know that the woman there, the mystery woman, is actually Jessica's mother, like, it compl it takes on completely different, you know, just, yeah, I, I really appreciate that. And, let's see. Yeah, you know, when Jessica tells, uh, you know, mystery woman that... Jessica, yeah, Je that Jessica should have been, yeah, because at this point she doesn't know that the doctor brought anyone else back, C certainly not that, you know, anyone else in her family, you know, yeah, she, she tells her, you know, the, yeah, the doctor should have allowed me to die, and yeah, she gets very angry, calls her an ungrateful ingrate, and we see that she has super strength and super jumps, and is even you know, even better at those than Jess. And, yeah, so one thing of... Uh, another theme of this season is how Jessica feels about losing her family, which, you know, the first season didn't spend a lot of time on that. That brings us to episode four, God Help the Hobo. And Jess can barely sit through the anger management. I really appreciate the people we see are not made out to be ridiculous. And she eventually throws the ball so hard it breaks and gets the signature. She's busting your ball, man. Pissing me off. Pissing me off more. And Vito wants to see Jess's room. Well, he wants to get away from his arguing parents. And... Yeah, he's super into the superhero stuff. Almost falls out of the window, but she catches him. Let's see. And and now we see Griffin frustrated with Jess. We see, you know we saw that normally the two of them do get along. And Price expresses his anger at Jessica to Jerry. Points out that. Who points out that he's othering Jess. And... Sally is still mad about the biting incident. I really love the line, Now I remember why I bit her. And yeah, Trish points out she was entitled, sincerely apologizes. Ah, uh, what's it called? Checking her privilege... And Trish wants to make sure Jessica doesn't hurt Max. And later in this episode, she herself struggles to control her anger. Price tries to hire Malcolm, which by the end of the, the season, you know, Malcolm, yeah, actually does go to work for him. I really appreciate that despite how awfully Price behaves, 
he does claim to care about people because it is sadly true that some people who claim to care about people show with show who they are with their actions, not their words. And, you know, it is also, like, a point in his favor, once he realizes that, you know, Alyssa is the, the killer, he, like, he specifically tells Jessica, I, I couldn't send a bunch of cops into her path, and, and, you know, who would obviously die. Now... And, yeah, a woman collapses in front of Jerry, who's terrified that that's her future due to ALS. And... Oscar says that he won't evict Gifts Jessica liquor, and it cu cuts to a couple having sex. At first, I thought it was Oscar and Jessica, but it turns out to be Trish and Griffin, showing that, Trish, that, that the two of them are on good enough terms for that, despite some arguing recently. I believe it was intentional. I think the show wanted us to think that Oscar and Jessica jumped into bed together. And Griffin says, never underestimate the frailty of the male ego. Absolutely. And I really appreciate when we men can be honest about that. So, yeah, male fragi fragility is another... Right, and another theme of the season, and how fast women can lose their power, especially to other women with power. For the record, I don't actually have a problem with people like you. It's just you. Okay, thanks. And Jess says she isn't a misanthrope. Another theme of the season. And when Jess kisses Oscar, he does return that. But when she starts to take his pants off, he stops her. She's going too fast for him. The first season has her quickly go to bed with men. Here we have a man pointing out that it's not... He uses the word normal. I prefer healthy. I'm not judging, but if you're ready to work on that, please do. You'll feel better after. I should have punched him in the Tesla years ago. And Malcolm gets... Uh... That. Anyway. And yeah, Jerry talks to her doctor, wants something quick, painless, and guaranteed. She describes how bad it was for her father, whereas it'll take longer for her. I will get what I need, either from you or some back alley drug dealer in Amsterdam. Too much? Not if you're grocery shopping in Texas. And they test the taser. Before Jessica gets Trish to do it. I thought they were going to do that thing where a character says something really mean to a character they care about in order to get them to do something like that. I really appreciate they didn't go that route. I appreciate how humane the depiction is of unhoused individuals here. That should be the norm, but it sadly isn't. And, yeah, Trish starts using the inhaler. Let's see. And, you know, Inez points out, you know, yeah, it, it was something like, you know, she's asked who's after you, and she responds something like, every loser with a dick, do you have any idea what it's like being a woman on the streets, which is sadly very true. And, yeah, Trish is more aggressive because of the inhaler, just like Simpson was. And, yeah, it's confirmed that it was Price who had the guy steal Jessica's things, but then the mysterious woman attacked him. She was not describing you. And Jess and Trish are both arrested. And the episode ends on Jess saying three times, almost as if she isn't convinced it's true, that's not me, about the bloody aftermath of Elisa killing Nicholas.
Episode 5, The Octopus. So the yeah, we see Alyssa burning the files on IGH and the clo the clothes she wore when she killed Nick. So by the end, she's nude, but not filmed in male gaze or mocked for her age. Excellent choice. And Dorothy still consistently calls Trish Patsy. I'm not mad at you. Do they have you on sedatives? The truth matters, not if nobody wants to believe it. I really appreciate this season exploring how badly women are treated by the legal system. There are a lot of misogynists who think they get a free pass, which is absurd. And Alyssa plays piano... It's, you know, this song that, you know, was very familiar to her before. And, you know, it's, it's a, a mom with an infant knocks on the window because the infant really likes the piano. And I was very relieved when the baby and mom left before Alyssa lost control. I don't know, maybe that's also a thing, because, you know, uh, actually, I don't think I've mentioned yet, but this season, every episode, all 13 episodes were directed by women, and, yeah, you know, I have seen movies made by men where even small children are brutalized, and, yeah, I, I don't think very many mothers would do that kind of thing in, in a movie, show that kind of thing in a movie, I mean. And, you know, much less do it in real life, obviously. And, you know, Jerry is on medication and he can make her need to throw up. When Jessica finds out, she moves the trash bin closer, doesn't say anything mean. And that actually, you know, she's not used to taking care of sick people. So it's not that it, like, brings back some kind of like, instinct or some kind, you know, so, no, it legitimately just is, you know, when she hears that, she empathizes. And Costa says he's one of the cops at the station who want to work with Jess because they remember Kilgrave. Same. And... Yeah, you know, she gets his contact information and later does contact him. I really appreciate she's trying something new. She's trying to be less self-destructive because at the end of the day, if you have the strength, you can choose something else, even if you feel compelled to do something wrong. And Malcolm follows Inez, who's got the, the TV, and keeps pushing her. And eventually she says, she you know, she drops the TV and says, you win. A new TV. You have to pay for it and pick it up yourself. Don't smile. Great scene. And Griffin proposes, claimed to Jess that Trish was in danger, so she'd be there for it. Dorothy told Trish, let's see, that it was a career thing. And, yeah, Evidently, the the secret thing Griffin did, contacting someone, you know, let's see, yeah, contacting someone without her knowing about it and going into her computer, this was all to arrange the proposal in secret. Thank you means yes, right? And Malcolm gets Inez to the safe house, Inez is angry with him, speaks mean, fluently. Could you cut the crap? And Jessica now has the idea, goes to talk to Dave. And first, she is very harsh with him. In the long term, she does start to be more gentle, does get info, get him to draw a picture of Dr. Carl, which she later uses to identify him. So at first, she herself does not show a lot of empathy 
towards this man who's struggling with mental health issues. Overall, the show is very empathetic towards him. It's true that when she provokes his anxiety, he is triggered, but this is a show where a number of characters who get, you know... Yeah, this is a show with a number of characters who get triggered. In general, the show doesn't use triggering as a punchline, but treats it with respect, as we all should. And, yeah, we learn about octopus genes. Let's see. Yeah, and, you know, Dorothy accuses Trish of... I'm not gonna repeat her words, but just... She thinks that Trish... Uh, traded sexual favors for... You know, with Max for, for information, and... Yeah, Trish slaps Dorothy, immediately regrets it, but then uses the inhaler again. Another instance of using violence, because it's cathartic, but not useful... And Jessica finds Dr. Carl. He's with... Al I forget how they pronounce it now. Ali Alyssa? I think it's Alyssa. And Carl recognizes her. And Alyssa uses her super strength to force everyone to run out by breaking the water tank. And that brings us to episode 6, FaceTime. The budget didn't include more of the people fleeing water, I see. And the phone got messed up from the water, so she buys some rice, makes makes a bit of rice a phony, even though rice is actually not a particularly good thing to put a wet phone in, but whatever. And I think people knew that that was... Actually, wait, does that mean that... No, Jessica usually is... is tends to be pretty well informed whatever and where there's an x there's always a y and the camera lingers on i think it's oscar's abs a bit of female gaze or gay male gaze gay male gaze no problem with that and they get on the paint-covered fabric and have sex on it. Let's see. Trish walks around her heightened senses, enabling her to detect, follow, and try to stop what she thinks is a robber, but the gun was a book, The Power of Positive Thinking, which is pretty funny. Like, you know, because he does, yeah, you know... Based on the way he moves, he probably has done something wrong before, and now he's trying to not do so. He has the book, The Power of Positive Thinking. I guess if I had to be critical, that joke probably made more sense, like, let's see, 15 years ago or something, but today, like, he would have it on a device. He's not going to carry around a that big book yeah so so that's that's the first thing i'm i'm critical of this season i think and malcolm calls jessica on doing the walk of shame let's see yeah jessica tries to comfort trish who just wants to think about something else. They go into the shop. The guy gets his gun ready. Then Trish gets her out. Take a breath. And this time, not from the inhaler. Fish were hurt. People were terrorized. And the shop owner isn't a citizen, so he can't call the cops. And, you know, he, he indicates Dr. Carl and says, bet he's a citizen, pointing out that illegal immigrants actually tend to obey the law more than citizens. You know, it's, it's when, in, in case you don't remember, it's when Carl uses the, the knockout syringe on Alyssa. And Malcolm meets, I think he called her Nish, Nisha, like Nichelle or something. 
And at first she really doesn't want to let him back in, but she does end up hugging him, which we then realize was just so he could take her access card. And Inez overhears Jerry telling Jessica that she wants Inez out, so she takes some jewelry. But when she finds the medication, she stops the steal. I really appreciate that they did not show this character stealing anything before she thought she might end up back on the street. You know, first with Malcolm, now with Jerry. Let's see. Um... Yeah, you know, if you just open your door and say you're going to take care of her, the worst she'll do is eat expensive dessert. Tastes a bit like fish eggs, don't it? And wear fancy clothes. Let's go hit some balls. And Trish uses her image as being entitled to distract the guards. If she had never behaved like that in real life, or if her behaving like that hadn't gotten out, then they wouldn't have believed her that she was being serious when she's standing there saying, you have to let me into that club. Now, and Jess tosses the two security guys, and the um, Ambrose thinks that Carl is a hero for saving his son, and it actually is, you know, there are a number of characters in this season who call him a hero for saving lives, which, if you want to be 100% technical, he did save lives with his, you know, yeah. Trish has to stop distracting. Vomit struggles to find an in purse. She looks like an addict. And Jess easily carries the golf clubs. Ambrose doesn't want to help, so she breaks his golf club. At first I thought she was going to break all of them, but she just walks off. And Trish is keeping the inhaler secret from Jess. Stay in bed, okay? Don't do anything stupid. And she immediately gets up, desperately looks for the inhaler, again, looking like an addict. And we see it was in the jacket that she left at Jessica's. And... Oscar finished the painting of Jessica in bed. Some women find it very romantic when a man watches over them as they sleep, which is, to be clear, an extremely exposed and vulnerable position to be in and I, th I think was it was it Anya Taylor Joy who said that when she was a child she thought that she had to protect her parents when they were asleep because she was afraid that there was some like yeah, I, I don't remember the exact details, but yeah, you know, ch children get strange ideas sometimes. And Malcolm talks to Trish about her ex, and Trish uses the inhaler, then or his ex, rather, yeah. Trish uses the inhaler, then gets very sexually aggressive with Malcolm. She isn't on top from right away, but she gets there seemingly very quickly. Jessica threatens Ambrose's son. The line keeps moving, and I keep stepping over it. How far is too far, and will there ever be a way back? And she explores the house that Ambrose sent her to, seemingly recognizing things like the music that we also heard Alyssa playing earlier. Empanada, I think it's pronounced, that she said her parents kept around. That was the first thing that she got drunk on. And she recognizes Mystery Woman as her mother, Alyssa. And that brings us to episode 7. The Gift of Game Crazy Town. I'm just kidding. It's called I Want Your Cray Cray. And, yeah, you know, starting with this episode, Mystery Woman is identified by the subtitles as Alyssa. And we get narration by her, some story told from her perspective, which is a first for the show. 
she sees her face in reflection and that's the face that Jess saw in flashback. We see her grab teen Jess. And to make Carl look younger, he has a beard and ponytail and a totally radical man t-shirt. And that's not that's not a criticism of the show. That is a criticism of TV shows using corny crap like that to try to make us believe, oh, this is in the past. This is a flashback. That's they don't normally look like that. Let's see, on Dexter, I think they made Dexter like slightly overweight and maybe he also had longer hair or something just i get that it doesn't always make sense to get a, a younger actor who looks similar but it's just really corny it's so silly and we see the music video premiere of trish's i want your cray cray Jessica is not a fan, even though everybody else present is. And Jessica is not going to lie about it either. She's in college, wishes that Trish was as well, doesn't want Trish on drugs. We see Sterling quit. Jessica and Trish stop being friends. So basically, Dr. Carl is a man who wants to control the emotions, rage, and strength of women. The only reason that Alyssa is violent is because of trauma, which though not caused by a man in this case, was exacerbated by a man. So, a very apt metaphor for real life. Actually, yeah, she she later, in a later episode, she blames her husband, Jess's father, biological father, for causing the accident. So, yeah, it, it the trauma is caused by a man, actually. And she specifically says, you know, he... It was like he... He thought his dick would fall off if I drove or something like that. And, yeah, it's true. There, There's a lot of men who can't handle women having more control or power than they do. Have, being better than them at something. Jessica and Sterling are now dating. We see her get the black leather jacket. And... You know, he wants to create a club named Alias, so this is before Alias Investigations. That guy? That guy's cute. What? I said he was cute. Sterling wants Trish to invest, just thinks Trish will see it as a handout. And we even see Inez and Luan attacked by Alyssa. Wyatt, the investor who was promised 50% in profits, shows up unexpectedly expecting his money very tense and just shoves the hot chicken dish right on his face and they all leave which is like because because they just got this takeout you know they're gonna eat it while it's hot and she puts it right on his face like if you do not put something burning hot on your face but just like poke your your you know the the face is very very sensitive you know and yeah <laughs> Hot chicken right on the face. That's going to make a lot of people leave. That's not, you're not going to want to stay around for, for the encore or second course, as it were. And Alyssa tries to get contact info on Jess from Dorothy. Has to say that Jess was always a moody little shit. Jessica kicks open the fire hydrant for the kids because of the intense heat. And... Alyssa sees Jessica happy about Sterling, follows her to the bathroom, gets her a tampon from the fridge without a door. And the, like, that's another thing that, like, so many male directors, you know, and we, we don't even have to go, like, way far back, but, like, the amazing Spider-Man from 2012, I'm just gonna double check, but I'm, like, 90% sure. Definitely the director is male, and the people who wrote it are all male. So, yeah. Um, that also has a woman talking about having a period. And they make poor, talented Emma Stone you know, go through this, you know, oh, comical, you know, description of, of having PMS so that her father will leave her alone, you know, so 
Yeah, but here it's just... Yeah, completely... Yeah. Let's see... You know, it's... Yeah, it's treated as just part of the human experience. You know, it's not some, you know, thing that that is, you know... Many times when when there's something when there's a difference between men and women, men will ah what's the um what's the word? Men will will characterize the the female only thing as this like ah what's the word um as as this really abhorrent just monstrous awful thing now the um, yeah so yeah well you know Alyssa follows sterling he leaves with wyatt and the others and they actually say they're willing to forgive the debt if jessica will be muscle for them even though they say it might get messy and the only thing he asks for in return, you know, he's, he doesn't ask her, you know, just make sure she's safe, the kind of thing. No, no, it's just, he asks for a quarter of what they make, which is also just terrible business. Like, a quarter is only 25. That's not even enough to buy boots. Alice loses control, kills Sterling, and you can really understand, like, obviously, and, and she regrets it as well, but, yeah, you know, she just heard, because to her, like, the safety of Jessica is like one of the main things on on her mind. One of one of her, you know, ma major priorities. And Trish is going to go down on Gus in the bathroom. That's when you need a good friend to bring clarity to the situation. And Jessica delivers an excellent monologue to him about why you shouldn't call a woman. Yeah, if I just say the B word. And amazingly, he's so stupid, he doesn't get that she was telling him to stop calling women the B word. He thought that she wanted him to say it again. <laughs> but yeah, that, you know, I really appreciate the, the, you know, both Jerry and Jessica in this season calling out men who other women, and powerful women especially, because because this is like Trish doesn't really want to do you know and and that's it's not like this show is ah crap I forget what it the show is clearly sex positive there are a lot of sex scenes and I yeah I guess about half the time a sex scene on the show is going to you know about half the time it's a positive it shows how close people are to each other and that kind of thing and the other half, it's like, oh, don't do not do that. You're going to regret it later. You, you know, it's she's not, like, into Gus. She's she's doing it to say thank you. You know, like, if you, if you really badly want to thank him, like, you have money, just, like, tip him really well or something. You know, and that's also the kind of thing where, you know, yeah, Gus is a creep. You know, we, we already knew that, but it's now it's just beyond clear he also doesn't he doesn't really care about her he's you know he is one of the many people who is throwing expensive things at trish because right now she's really popular and you know it 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 gets him more customers you know so just yeah and and in the bathroom just like if you are going to have sex in a bathroom, in a public bathroom. Just make 100%, just be sure that that's what you want. Because it, you know, that is, like, I'm not judging. If that's what you want to do, it's what you want to do. Some people are into, I'm not here to kink shame, you know. But clearly that's not what this is. This is not like, oh, she's so into him and they just can't wait to... They, they can't get to a hotel room before, the, the, you know, no, it, this is, this is Trish starting to spiral, you know, or, or 
just seeing evidence of Trish started. She might have already started to, yeah. And I really appreciate it. Once Trish realizes Jess is mourning, she's there for her. She And Jess outright says she's scared Trish will die if she doesn't stop doing drugs. You know, and it's that thing, you know, Jess says, I can get my own money, and she rips off an ATM. Literally. And the, the you know, Trish, I, f I forget what she says, but she also, like, they're clearly not thinking very deeply about what they're doing at the right, at that exact time. And Alyssa goes back to Dr. Carl, now feeling like she needs his help. And the episode ends with Alyssa finishing the recap to Jess, asking if Jess can ever forgive her. And Jess says no. Dr. Carl and hits her, and Dr. Carl tranquilizes her. I don't know if I love that episode ending. Now that I've seen the entire season, when I watched it, I was like, you know, okay, this is clear. But in the in the long term. You know, over the last, what is that, five more episodes of the season? Six more episodes, I guess. We, you know, we do see them start. N no, actually, yeah. Okay, fair enough. They, she wanted, ah, let's see. Um, Jess, at the time, wasn't really ready to, yeah, to, to forgive her. But later in the season, she does try to empathize more with her. Yeah, actually, I, yeah, it was a, a good season, as episode ending. That brings us to episode eight, Ain't We Got Fun, which is the song that they keep, that, that, um, Alyssa hums and sometimes sings, and Jess wakes up strapped to her bed, Strapped to the bed for her mother. Carl still wants to think he's a good guy. Explains why Alyssa killed. And she struggles to regain control while making breakfast. Carl does actually admit that it's his fault. And on the cell, Jess tries to convince Trish not to investigate further. Not knowing that the inhaler makes her refuse that. Carl unchains his heart, and then Jess, and she sends the address to the cop. Very tense when the three are in the basement and trying to convince the others. You didn't sleep at all last night, just thinking about me. Malcolm can tell that Trish is high, so she comes clean. Alyssa tells Jessica she'll go to the raft, which was introduced in Captain America 3 Civil War, which came out before this season premiered. And Jerry asks Inez why she is unhoused, and the story sounds, sadly, very realistic, very common. I really, really love how much the show cares about minorities. Like, this is just... What, what's the what's the phrase? Manna from heaven. This is... I, I, I love this season. You know, again, in case it's been a while since you watched it, Inez says that there were a couple of... You know, she struggled to, to hold a job... She she got jobs a couple of different places, and you know because of the trauma, she struggled to to keep a uh, uh, you know yeah a typical job, and she missed you know a, a payment or two of of rent, and she was kicked out, and that is uh, you know it's it's absurd that that that's the kind of just yeah, but it is sadly very common. Jerry shares that she grew up poor and miserable, so that's part of why she is so harsh in cases and how she treats people. She's getting revenge, and she's scared she'll lose the power that she's fought so hard for. She's basically, she's being as cold and, and um, I, I'm not sure cold is the right word. She's being as cruel to people as the the bullies at school were to her when she was growing up you know basically they taught her you know that yeah that was what she was taught uh, you know Alyssa tells Jessica some hard truths every kid has ADD according to Big Pharma preach 
and Jessica finds the exit to the basement that Alyssa used. She can't let Alyssa be arrested. And the fact that Alyssa didn't use it, but instead tried to appeal to Jessica, goes a long way in proving she isn't just this monster. You know, we already knew she's stronger than Jessica. If she really didn't care about Jessica, she could easily overpower her and leave through the exit. Maybe chain Jessica to the bed to get a head start until the police arrive, you know, just... But, no. She, she doesn't even... She doesn't... And she doesn't say that, although, you know, it's obvious to... You know, it's not that Jessica couldn't put that together herself. But if you point out something that gives you more power than the other person, that can... It, it won't necessarily be meant as a threat, but it can be perceived as a threat. And Jerry demands healing. The guy starts to, then feels sick, and later we realize what's really going on there. Alyssa feels really angered by a New York camp driver, so in some way she completely fits in. And when it comes to texting and driving, she's technically correct. The very best kind of correct. I really appreciate that Alyssa does still behave like a mother to Jessica. She's still trying to... Uh, just, yeah. And the cop shows up to the office slash home. She manages to keep him out of there, not seeing Alyssa. But Alyssa leaves out the window. And introduced herself to Oscar. Praises his painting. Thank you for the painting and for helping her. Thank you for the intercourse. Malcolm goes to an LGBTQ bar, finds Benowitz there. At first I was worried that he was going to continue working the case, but he does do the right thing and tell Benowitz to tell the truth to his wife. Claims he's there for Linda when we know he's there for Jerry. Linda is the one who's aggressive against Jerry, so if Benowitz gets rid of Linda, Jerry won't be in as much trouble. And some homophobes insult the two of them. And in case you're watching this video and you're like, ah, oh, the homophobes are completely in the right here. Why are they waiting right outside the exit of an LGBTQ bar? Now, I'm not implying that they themselves are gay. I'm sure they're super straight. I'm pointing out how pathetic it is to stand right outside of a place, frequented by people you hate, just hoping to pick a fight with someone. You know, the, the LGBTQ people are not hurting anyone. Like, I've, I'm on the record as hating misogynists. You're not going to find me standing outside, you know, there they are, they are places that are known as places to gather. You know, I'm not going to stand outside one of them and shout obscenities as m misogynists are leaving, you know, and they actually are hurting people. And I'm, I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with protesting a place like that, but that's not what these homophobes are doing. They're just standing there just hoping that someone comes out that they can hurl some abuse at. At first, Malcolm just walks away. You know, I, I really, you know, he's the, the, he, he, f the, the, he says right to the homophobe's face, grow the, f grow up, you piece of shit, or you asshole, something like that, you know. And he turns, you know, turns, walks away, ugly pants, hands in pockets, and, you know, the, the, yeah, he's not bothered by the homophobic slur personally, but when the homophobe says that his father beat him, he stands up for his father's honor Starts to lose the fight, but then Trish comes to help, convinces him to use the inhaler. When he does, he freaks out, understandably. And Jerry and Inez together. Inez, you know, J Jerry... I forget. I think it's where... Yeah, it's when she, like, caresses the, the scars on Inez's legs. Do they freak you out? Every time I shake your hand, I want to stick your fingers in my mouth. Jerry gets affectionate with Inez, who, after briefly looking like she's not sure how to feel about it, lets her, and that is something that, you know, later she talks about, you know, she didn't, she did feel bad about this, but, just, yeah. And, let's see. yeah, so the episode ends with Alyssa and Jessica getting shot at. That brings us to episode 9. Shark in the bathtub. 
Monster in the Bed. That... There we go. And we open on Binocular POV. Price Cheng. And I did wonder at the end of... You know, as the, as the episode before this one ended with someone sniping, I wonder if that was maybe him, since he hasn't been in the, you know, in several of the most recent episodes, but his storyline hadn't been resolved. His hatred of superpowered people drove him to this. The murder she committed was days ago. She hasn't been a threat since then. And she reaches him, attacks. Just use Trank Syringe on Cheng. It's super effective. Effective on supers, too. You lay one finger on him, and you are dead to me again. Smart. You know, I really she she doesn't always make the right decision, but she is really good at reading people and thinking out. The, you know, because like imagine how ridiculous it would be if Jess said to Alyssa, "If you hurt him, I'm gonna hurt you." Of course, she can't. Alyssa is stronger. Or if she said, "I'm gonna call the cops on you," that's not gonna work. Alyssa can fight them off, but you'll you know you are dead to me. That is, you know, yeah. And when Jess wants to rinse her own wound, they argue. That's real mother-daughter energy. The season's doing a really good job making it feel like that kind of relationship, in addition to the, the legal stuff, the, you know, killer PI, just, yeah, like, <laughs> you know, she points out, oh, come on, Jessica, I just want to rinse your wound. You can barely reach there with your own arm. Just let me help you, you know, stop being so stubborn about this. And it's just, yeah. You know, and it basically is, like, Jessica doesn't want Alyssa to help because she's mad at Alyssa, and she doesn't want Alyssa to get to do something that might help make up for the wrong things that she's done, you know. It, it is a very immature thing to, you know, yeah. Alyssa willingly lets Jessica chain her, in fact, asks her for help with it. Still angered by Jess wanting Carl arrested. Complicated, twisted romance, Alyssa and Carl. Without making any excuses for what Carl did, some doctors do fall for their patients since the relationship starts with the doctor trying to help the patient. I really, compl uh, ah. I really appreciate how complex this show is. That's what happens when you try to talk faster. Yeah, when, when your mouth is trying to produce words faster than your brain can perceive them. That did not work at all. Anyway. Yeah, Trish comes into Jess's place, asks what Malcolm said, basically worried that Malcolm outed... Or, uh, not outed. Um, snitched, I guess, is the correct term for that. Yeah. And Jess is trying to prevent her from knowing about Alyssa. Both are keeping personal secrets from their stepsister, despite how close their relationship used to be. Are you high? What's wrong with your eyes? A long take, the camera's still in the apartment, as Jess goes to the end of the hall to try to talk Trish into talking to her sponsor, not Spiral, but also worried about Alyssa. That's why the camera stays in the apartment, you know, in the back of her mind that's still... She, she can't stop thinking about Alyssa either. Just phenomenal camera work throughout this season. And Alyssa has night terrors, doesn't recognize Jess right away. Jess sleeps on the bed near Alyssa. And let's see, Trish sees Griffin on TV on location, upset, jealous, uses the inhaler. Alyssa tells Jess the accident wasn't her fault. It was her father's. Training means nothing. The will to act is everything. Throw Dad under the bus, or the truck, as it were. And Sonia took Vito, possibly headed to Peru. And Alyssa was ready to accept the trank to the neck, though annoyed, but instead just, you know, just tranks price again. That I, I really like that, you know. Just gets the needle out and, you know... Alyssa is like, you know, lifts her hair, exposes her neck to, to, yeah, I, I quite liked how that was handled. You know, because she is, she, she does acknowledge that 
there is, what's the word? There is an issue there. Did Jess name Alias, first the club, then the PI firm, after her mother, Alyssa? I mean, it's a very simple reording of the letters. I forget the word for that. But basically, she just swapped the S and the second A. So, yeah. And Trish, very antagonistic on radio, brings up Syria, obsessed with Griffin, being taken seriously, quits on air. I don't know if the... The thing about gluten, like, if that is the, the specific, because that's, that's when she quits, you know, to talking about gluten. And the, the author of the book on gluten, like, she, even when Trish gets real antagonistic, she can still point out, you know, facts about gluten. And I forget, it's, it's that, you know, Deadpool 2 had that joke, um, I had to throw... All the gluten, all the gluten into a rocket that went off the the planet, so it can't not ever, it can't not hurt us ever again. Because it is this thing of like, wait, um, is it is it bad for us? Is it fine for us? Is it like, which I don't know. I I feel like it's difficult to to keep up with, you know. But but I don't know. Maybe it's maybe it's. Is there such a thing as big gluten? The way that big oil is, you know, trying to distract people from climate change. Anyway. And Captain America isn't in the chest. Vito wouldn't leave without him. So that's a clever, you know, yeah, that means he must actually be. And there's a Stanley still cameo on the back of the bus as when they're on the at the at the station. And the bus is leaving and the mother-daughter together stop it. You know, I really appreciate... I hadn't really thought about it until right this second. But season 2 does it with mother-daughter. And season 1 did it with Jessica and Kilgrave. In both cases, maybe Jessica can control the monster. And, uh, uh, Kilgrave is a mon well, was a monster when he was live. But, yeah, control the, the threat. Let's go with that. Because technically, Alyssa is a potential threat. You know, in both cases, it's clear without Jessica, it's not going to work. But it will also mean that she basically, like, you know, she says in this season, don't put that on me. And, you know, the the... There's that line, you're his mother, nothing's going to change that. And Jessica intentionally says that in front of Alyssa because she, she really understands now. And Ronald in charge of... Uh, I'm, yeah, ZCN calls Trish, asking if she can produce that kind of energy every day on their channel. She might get a new job if she can get high, but the inhaler doesn't work. It has run dry. She had a steady thing until she got high. The job on the radio, but then she got high. And Oscar offers just papers for Alyssa, which is quite, yeah. That's also a thing, like, the, the you know, it fits with the noir thing that there are a number of people in this show in both seasons that work right on the edge of what's legal. And basically... Yeah, like the, the both seasons explore why what what drives people to that kind of thing of of breaking the law in in these ways. So, yeah. And Jess forgives Alyssa for thinking for letting Jess think she was, that Alyssa was dead. Price wakes up, Jess lets him out of the tub, calls Costa, and that's also, like, I really appreciate, you know, like, she she points out, okay, technically, I kidnapped you. I, that's on me. I acknowledge that. 
but you tried to shoot my mother, you know, so they're trying, you know, she's not like punching him or trying to trick him or forcing him. She, she, you know, he wakes up, uh, uh, she wakes him up, right? How did she know that he was going to, he was about to wake up? Oh, right, because this is about to happen to him. And then, you know, she just immediately, you know, she, she removes the, she, she like cuts open the, the, I forget, was it just duct tape around his wrists? I think it might have been, but yeah. She cuts that, and she's like, okay, look. Can we just agree that we're even? You know, we both did things that the other didn't, you know. And again, you know, he points out, Nick had a family. You know, which is, again, like, that's the kind of thing that, stereotypically speaking, that's what a woman would bring up, you know, and, ah. Uh, which is why I'm, you know, I'm saying it's because women had so much creative control over the season that that kind of thing gets brought up. You know, the line is spoken by a man, but that's because that man had a person, you know, he was friends with Nick. And, yeah, you know, she she calls Costa, attacks Jess until she regains self-control, chases Price, ends up arrested. This is how I lose my mother. I'm extremely impressed by the actress playing Alyssa. She can play motherly, she can play monstrous, she can play confused. All of it without seeming like she's playing different characters. It's different aspects of the same character. I'm afraid I forget her name, but... Uh, yeah, you know, it's it's on IMDb. She, she's incredibly talented in this. I don't think I've seen her in anything else, though. Or... Uh, it's, I've seen other stuff that she appeared in, but I cannot place her character, I'm afraid. That brings us to episode 10, a.k.a. Pork Chop. And... Let's see, Jess and Jerry don't get to be alone with Alyssa after she's arrested. And, yeah, they try to convince Alyssa to take the deal, but it means telling them all about Carl... Trish is struggling. I do love that the writers managed to have her point out America's problem with over-incarceration, even if she couldn't deliver it flawlessly. Ronald tears up her notes, tells her to talk about her addiction. Great intercutting between Trish and Jess. I am not a Barbie. That's true. Barbie has a job. Well, many jobs. And... Let's see... Trish comes clean to Jess, then Jess comes clean to her and Malcolm... Malcolm is frustrated with their lying. You slept with him. If it helps, he was the only one who showed his ass. Female gaze. Love it. And I don't mean, like, literally, although in this case also, but, you know, show your ass as in, like, make an ass of yourself. Now... And, yeah, Malcolm breaks up with Trish, says they're also no longer friends. I really appreciate Jessica comparing the Raft to Gitmo. Oscar and Jessica have sex, but we only see afterwards, because this really isn't the moment to dwell on that kind of thing. Trish is told just how bad the inhaler is for the human body. Jerry introduces Jessica to Inez and Shane, who does not look like shit. And Jerry tries to convince Jessica Dr. K has done some good. You know, it, it is, yeah, it's legitimately an interesting ethical debate. If someone uses awful methods to do some good, should we embrace or reject the good whilst, of course, rejecting the methods and the person? Jessica and Alyssa speak in code, trying to keep Dr. K safe, since Jessica has now accepted that simply is the only way Alyssa will agree to the deal. Alyssa and the guard Dale talk at first friendly enough, but then it really escalates. Dr. Carl does legitimately seem to love Alyssa and she him. And we learn that Dr. Carl does not know a Shane, he does not know a healer. Alyssa with Trish, very tense. Five more minutes. A human snooze button. Alyssa sees right through Trish and loses her temper. Let's see. 
Malcolm pumping weights, more female gaze, great. And Alyssa is now in torturing chains. America definitely has a problem with being brutal with inmates and guards getting away with abuse. The guard talks about his grandparents doing tough love, so now he's doing it to her. He tears up the one family photo she has. What a bastard. Breaks enough of her spirit that she agrees to eat the meat, despite apparently being, you know, it's, it's not clear if it's vegetarian or vegan. I mean, she does later eat the eggs without really any issue, so I'm guessing vegetarian. I, I think vegans tend to not eat chicken eggs, but I, I forget. No hatred towards any, you know, whether you're vegetarian, vegan, or, you know, carnivore, omnivore. Let's see. I really appreciate it that the episode doesn't make us sit through the actual forced feeding. It just shows that she agrees to it by her opening her mouth. It would be really gross to have a, to sit through. Like, you know, there's a lot of rape scenes that are just really really gross you know and and obviously this isn't quite a rape but it is a violation did it ding and it's not done no ding not done jessica tells jerry she hasn't really been healed she doesn't want to believe it but she can't help but consider it and later we see they did trick her so basically inez didn't regret stealing from Jerry she just realized Jerry might be a way for her to get Shane out of prison and let's see yeah yeah you know at, at first I thought oh maybe you know Shane didn't even know that he was supposed to fake this healing thing but apparently they can't yeah yeah like Inez probably called let's see or wait, is it the other way around? No, no, I guess the prisoner calls the person outside the prison. Yeah, yeah, I'm not entirely sure. But yeah, they, they, and Shane was the, came up with that. I love Jessica pretending to be casual with the guards, both when getting in and going out, like, sup, fellas? And Jessica sees the burn marks that the cuffs left on Alyssa. And Trish and Malcolm are together again. We again see his bare chest. And they find where Jessica met with Carl. When Jerry gets home and realizes that Inez and Shane stole everything from her, she does really amazing acting. Like, throughout this entire season, great performances. Performance? I forget if that refers to just the character or the scene or episode, whatever. And Jessica calls a guy who used to work with guard Dale, asks for anecdotes. She's told there were multiple prisoner suicides. And Jessica finds where he keeps trophies, but he gets her with pepper spray. And, like, verbally explains he's going to beat her to death, claim self-defense. She accidentally kills him, and the episode ends on that. I really appreciate. Like, it's clear that she didn't mean to kill him. Like, the episode makes it unmistakable. There is no doubt whatsoever she did not mean to kill Dale. But he, you know, the between the, like, the, the pepper spray... And the, the panic and the anger. Because, like, you know, okay, yeah, she, you know, let's see. She heals faster, I want to say, than, than people who don't have her powers. And she's stronger, but she's not, she's not bulletproof, for example, like Luke Cage is. You know, the, the yeah, you know, all, all of these things. And, and the, yeah, the, the anger, the hatred, you know, because when he drives off, we see, a, you know, she's staying there and we see her hand, like, clench into a fist. Like, she, she's furious about how badly he treats her mother. And, yeah, you know, this exploration of, you know, yeah, like, Kilgrave would say she is a killer. That brings us to episode 11, Three Lives and Counting. 
Okay, I think I gotta speed run the last couple of... So, let's see. Yeah, we open on Jess's chaotic thoughts, and Kilgrave chimes in with, You killed again. Make it look like a suicide. And she does. And when she drops the body, Kilgrave reappears to her, clapping, his purple lighting taking over. She shuts him down, he disappears for the time being. And the new guard is a lot friendlier to Alyssa, treating her like a fellow human being. Like, you'd want to be friends with Meryl and chatting with her and such. Alyssa guessed Jess is why Dale didn't show up. It's far from the first time we see Jess drinking on the show, but she looks so much more freaked out than usual. And there's no male gaze as she takes her clothes off. Because it's not about her bare skin, it's about the trauma. Jess takes the call. Did you go out? I didn't want you to do that. Are you okay? Did you clean up? the apartment good job on speaking code no male gaze on the shower either kilgrave reappears proud of you too kilgrave is really pushing jessica's buttons she wants to triangulate but the find my phone has been turned off and jessica leaves an angry message on malcolm's voicemail we learned that he updated it to say associate wow and she is able to triangulate by calling his dates And let's see. Yeah, you know, Jessica finds Dr. Carl is not in his room. She goes to see Alyssa and guard Marilyn Toussaint is also friendly with Jessica, like she is with Alyssa, even when the topic is brought up that Jessica turned in her mother. And, you know, she says, mother daughter complicated, you know, it complicated relationship, something like that. I have ghosts too. Very realistic. This is true of many people that have killed, even if they felt, at least at the time, that it was right. And then she continues to say, they fade in time. Which is true for some. And Jessica tells Alyssa she will find Dr. K. And Kilgrave sings the Cray Cray song. Wow. By the way, uh, there's this kind of funny, there's a, there's a video, there's a full, you can watch the full music video. Let's see. I think it's yeah, Jessica Jones, I Want Your Cray. Yeah, right, it's just called I Want Your Cray Cray Full Video Marvel's Jessica Jones. It's on the Marvel Entertainment channel right now. And in addition to a music video, it also has the pop-ups from, you know, yeah, back when, back when that was a thing. And Marilyn sees Alyssa is interested in the nature documentary, backs her chair up so they can both watch it. Very nice of her. We can flash back to the beach. And now there are multiple Kilgraves in Jess's mind. And the actor playing Carl also played Jason in the original Butterfly Effect movie. He's great in that too. Patsy, Trish Talk, not really my demo. And just shoves her into a doll cage. You should have taken the 20 bucks. You sound like someone who wants to save the world. I do too. Let's see. You know, that is also one of the themes of this season. Not everyone who wants to save the world can maintain a healthy perspective. Keep themselves, themselves from going too far. And Carl shows... Trish the Needles, that's, wow, that was, yeah. And Jess is really struggling to keep Kilgrave out, grabs a guy by the throat, lifts him off the ground that she thought was Kilgrave, and, like, David Tennant does a really great, like, he's still, like, laughing, he's not like, oh, Jessica, let me go, he's, he's laughing, he's still, and that also helps underline that this is in her mind, because obviously in real life he wouldn't be able to keep, you know, but, yeah. And I can imagine that David Tennant spent a while perfecting saying the name Jessica in such a haunting way. If I go the rest of my life without hearing him say it like that, I will be very happy for that. And Jess wants to kill Carl. I love that right after Kilgrave says, he'll never stop. She says, you'll never stop. Showing how strong... You know, he still has a strong hold over her, even after he died. 
even you know she killed him and that didn't make it go away completely this entire episode really shows that after killing someone she struggles to push away the idea that she's defined by that that she is a killer that she'll do it a fourth time you know she killed Reva she killed Kilgrave she killed Dale and Kilgrave is of course the personification of this Let's see. and Dr. Carl listened to more of the criticism of his work and his character than some other people would prefer he gives Jessica a head start carrying Trish and then shoots one of the pressurized containers blowing up the entire clinic I would criticize this for the big Hollywood fireball explosion, but I think the show is saying that IG, AG, IGH is over now. Like, the, the, the stuff they did before can still have ramifications, but it's not, there's not going to be more of it. And certainly they told a lot of great stories from that. If they don't feel like there's more to mine there, I can understand why. And, you know, it is basically like there's no way for Trish to just go back and try to recreate what Carl did because... All of it is destroyed now. Jessica's frustrated. She can't do more for Trish. Blames Malcolm. Fire. She fires him. And then he says, in case you change your mind, I quit. And she finally gets rid of Kilgrave. Alyssa learns that Carl is dead. Heartbreakingly kills Marilyn, who was showing concern for her. You know, she comes in and is like, do you need a doctor? And starts break out and the episode closes on that that's actually yeah the the episode that introduces Marilyn also kills her off she only appeared in one episode and I I really felt like I got to know her and the yeah just amazing job episode 12 pray for my Patsy The doctors don't know how to help Trish further, don't really understand what's happening to her. Alyssa gets out of prison, prison attire into formal clothes, stares at Trish talk poster being ripped down, says she's not a fan. And just tries to help the cops. Alyssa goes to the radio station, but the blonde there is not Trish. Costa, it's Patsy, it'll leak. I continue to find it really funny when people say it's Patsy about Trish. And Tempe from Luke Cage. Take control of the narrative, Miss Walker. She's still really badass. And Alyssa goes to the hotel room, calls in, sees Dorothy talking about Trish being in the hospital, shit talking Carl. And Jerry calls numerous different pawn shops. And apparently one of the things she lost was from Hermes, the Tintin creator. I did not know he was also making really expensive stuff. I know, and it's, it's someone else with that name. I realize that. And yeah, Jessica and Alyssa get into Trish's room at the same time. Jess tries to talk her down, has the injection ready. The cops join, but it does not go well. Jerry talks to the pawn shop um, person in person, gives up the watch that was given to her by her doctor wife. What is it with the MCU and tragedy befalling people whose doctor wives gifted them watches? That's oddly specific. I jest. And now Trish is in the morgue to keep her away from Alyssa. And I, I like, you know, you're in the morgue. Am I dead? <laughs> Let's see. And Trish w wakes up. She and Jess argue about powers. Carl, Alyssa calls. They agree to meet Trish's apartment. Anything not nailed down is fair game, including the nailing things down machine, which, though used to nail things down, is not itself nailed down. Jerry buys a gun and ammo from Turk. Jess escapes via the bathroom, takes the car with bodies in it by hiding with one of the corpses, uses the driver to, well, drive. Jerry catches up to Inez and Shane, talks to Inez in the car. My trust is hard to earn, and I gave it to you. Her trust, too. I really appreciate that the show humanizes Inez after the robbery and 
Jerry pretends to tell Inez the truth, but it's a lie about Shane baiting her into shooting him so she herself doesn't get her hands dirty, calls 911 as soon as she as the shooting is done so that it can't be stopped, but Inez also can't get away. You know, I, I don't get the sense that the show says that, you know, you shouldn't trust unhoused people. It's more that you shouldn't take advantage of unhoused people because they might resort to that kind of thing. You know, if Jerry wasn't trying to get something out of Inez, you know, things wouldn't have gone so badly. And Trisha's situation worsens. Jess points a gun at Alyssa. Alyssa tries to talk her out of shooting. KOs her, and the episode ends on her driving Jess away while pleasant music plays. And that brings us to the season finale, Playland. Let's see. Jess wakes up. They argue about if Alyssa can control herself with Jess, why Alyssa wants the two to be together so they can help each other, Jess keeping Alyssa from using violence against people, and Alyssa improving Jess's situation, you know, her isolation. Dorothy yells, Patsy, and Trish walks up, wakes up. It worked in the first Avengers movie, so why not? Compelling talk between Jess and Eliza in the car. If you say with great power comes great responsibility, I swear I will throw up on you. Literally everyone not in the MCU has said this at some point, so I'm glad someone in the MCU said it as well. Wait, does that mean that regular people in the MCU know that phrase? Because it hadn't been spoken in the MCU by this point. Let's see. And Malcolm showers, shaves, dresses, all shot in female gaze. And with the car crash, we see more mother-daughter teamwork. Very fun and tense. People who claim women can't direct action have no idea what they're talking about. And, you know, when there's the huge explosion, it's such a relief to see that they did make it out. And Jerry finishes up her yoga class, and Malcolm interrupts as she's about to seduce the instructor. Very sweet when Alyssa cheers and whoops at Jess joining her, saying, We. That was, yeah, very, very sweet. And and I like that, yo. Know, and Jess is also, like, she she she's maybe annoyed by it, and she's like, okay, come on now. But she... You know, she smiles a little bit. She is... It's nice to see someone you care about happy. Oscar doesn't want Jessica to go with Alyssa. Her line about isolated is excellent. And Oscar was followed by the cops, but Jess does manage to get away. I'm really conflicted. On one hand, I'd miss the show being this way, but on the other, if season three was about Jess and Alyssa tag-teaming situations requiring, requiring powered people, that would also be amazing. And Jerry expresses hatred of Linda now that she can get away with it. Like, you know, she's like, Jerry, I really don't appreciate you demanding a meeting at such short notice and Jerry's like well Linda I don't appreciate anything about you and Malcolm got Linda to say enough to cause a stir about the drug laundering Jerry keeps all clients including Rand be very afraid of the woman with nothing left to lose so you know she finds power but in a different way than usual and Jerry won't hire Malcolm, but does pay handsomely. What we did back there, I want more. Okay, one, I would totally rock a unitard. Love seeing female confidence. And Detective Costa calls the kid's phone, which I, I quite like, you know, at first you hear the laughter and it's like, what is going on? Like, I didn't even think about, oh, right, someone's phone. And a kid would choose that as a ringtone. And, yeah, Detective Costa to Jess says, you're one of the good ones, which is a choice, choice of words. Your mother has crossed the line. 
Do you understand what I'm telling you? Are you ready to cooperate? It's not over yet. Jeez Louise. And Dorothy's talking to Trish. Costa shows up. The makeup on Trish is very... Uh, yeah, the actress playing Trish. Rachel Taylor, I want to say it's her name. The makeup on her is simple but effective. She had this sickly pale thing recently due to Carl's procedure, but now color has returned to her cheeks. And because we get that, we don't need a lot of doctor dropping exposition stuff. And Alyssa walks, uh, breaks into the titular playland. You should walk. What do you mean? You know, walk, put one foot in front of the other. Alyssa wants Jess to go, she refuses, and they use the Ferris wheel like Alyssa talked about. I made you very sweet. And Trish shot Alyssa. Jess is angry, throws her away, and, you know, Jess arranges it so Costa thinks Jess shot Alyssa, proving her as indeed one of the good ones. She turned on her kind. She does what the white male establishment wants. Similar to Dave Rubin, Candace Owens, etc. Not a perfect metaphor since Alyssa did kill innocent people, but good metaphor. And Jess stops the robbery, keeps the shop owner from shooting the guy afterwards. And he still demands she pay. I really love, like, I could watch Kristen Ritter do Jessica Jones double takes for the rest of my life and never tire like you know she walks down the you know she she grabs the whiz you know because she's like in her mind she's like i just saved this i saved his life i saved his business you know okay grab a whiskey walk she gets almost all the way out and he's like you're gonna pay for that and she just she stops turns back around walks back and she's like are you serious? You know, just I really love that. You know, it in the in the season opener, the the it was this thing of you know she's walking away, and this guy is you know says nice ass, and she turns around and says, "What did you just say?" And he get you know he repeats it with the same amount of of um, confidence, and you know she finds that. To be just enough that she'll, you know, have sex with him. Let's see. See, that's the thing. Like, Jess does also have, ca you know, Jess has casual sex. But she basically only goes for sex with people that she is attracted to. You know, you'll never find her, you know, on her knees in front of a club owner in a public bathroom. Yeah. Jess can't forgive Trish. Her blood relative does now mean more to her than Trish as found family. She joins Oscar, so she does want some found family. And we see Trish now has super reflexes, so Carl helped. And I like, you know, I'm, I'm sure some people would say, well, why didn't she realize it right away? If you, when you aren't using your reflexes, you don't really think about them. You know, it is the kind of thing that, like, I, you know... I'm not as physically active as I used to be because of my back. And yeah, uh, a couple of weeks ago, I dropped something and I surprised myself by how quick my reflexes still were, despite not being, you know, so yeah. And Jerry Price, uh, Jerry hires Price and Malcolm. And, you know, Malcolm asks, is this legal? And she says, that's entirely up to you. You know, so it is, yeah, very logical endpoint for Malcolm for this season, and so is Jessica's. You know, Malcolm, everyone lies to him, everyone betray him, he's fed up with this world, and yeah, he is getting into this, like, investigating, like, he is smart, he is driven, and Jessica, you know, she keep, yeah, she's, she's always alienating people, and... Yeah, actually, there was that thing where, let's see, her mother apparently didn't have friends other than Carl, and Jessica specifically tells the cops she she always pissed off her friends, or some, something like that. And Jessica finally lets Oscar in, other than the in, 
other than in the if you know what I mean sense. And she speaks hero to Vito, which and he eats it up. And yeah, I think maybe Trish got a taste for serious journalism in Defenders when she spoke with Karen. They were trying to figure out. So yeah. So every every Marvel Netflix show that you know. Yeah, up, up to and including this one. I haven't watched the ones after this. Ranked, worst to best, I love all other than Iron Fist Season 1. Iron Fist Season 1, Daredevil Season 2, Defenders, Punisher Season 1, Luke Cage Season 1, Daredevil Season 1, Jessica Jones Season 2, and Jessica Jones Season 1. Now, let's see... Um... Right, so I have some, some critic quotes. Though this season of Jessica Jones was directed entirely by women, it continues a harmful trend of resting its feminist heroism on the backs of people of color. And perhaps that is Jessica Jones' greatest downfall. That is probably the biggest, uh, yeah. Let's see. Absent an enemy, the show turns inward and starts chewing itself up. It's fascinating. And, yeah, um... So some people think that it's a problem, that there are not many positive white men in in this show, which is just like minorities used to, and to an extent still, have to look hard to find even one good role model that looks and sounds like them. And they use, you know, this, so, so the fact that, now we're getting those kinds of things means that finally those exist. You have tons, you have like a hundred years of film, of filmed entertainment, where like the the vast majority show white men in a positive light. So just go watch one of those. You know, the the white the, the negative depictions of white men in this season, you know, they use that to examine toxic masculinity. This season examines so many issues that affect minorities exclusively or more so than white people. We need more like this. Others said feminists, and that's great. Let's see. Yeah, some, some people said that, you know, everyone around Jessica is coming apart. You need at least one person with their act together, otherwise it can be exhausting. I disagree. Slow burn, which is good. Trish is important, given more screen time. Let's see. Yeah, some, some people really hated that this didn't have... Technically, this season doesn't have a villain as such. Let's see. It makes for a pretty talky 13 episodes. Yeah. Uh, good. Um, let's see. Yeah, they, they praise Carrie Ann Moss's storyline and acting. And. Right, Janet, Janet McTeer plays Alyssa. And with great power comes great mental illness. The season explores the mental health of heroes slash people with superpowers. Jessica Jones is a very self-destructive character. She makes all of the bad choices. No villain, and that's interesting. And that is... All that I have to say, but yeah, um, I'm really gonna miss the show. I, I'm glad there's one more season to watch, but it will be a little while before I get to it. I am looking forward to. So the, yeah, the next one is Luke Cage, which, you know, like I mentioned in the rankings, that is season one of Luke Cage is one of my absolute favorites of, of Marvel Netflix. So yeah, um, the let's see. Uh, I don't know what that's about, but I can deal with that afterwards. Okay, um, yeah, 
I, I really, really love this season. I, I'm so glad that, you know, the MCU does some feminist uh, stuff. You know, there I wish there was way more of it. Although, you know, today with, with Disney Plus and Phase 4, uh, you know, there have been other... And, and technically, the Marvel Netflix is not in continuity with the main MCU. So, you know, where these... The, the Phase 4 stuff is. So, that's... That's really good, but yeah, um, I thought they did an incredible job with with this season, and just yeah, um, I think that is gonna have to be it. So yeah, really looking forward to watching Luke Cage as well, and. I intend to do at least one more video before this week is over, so stick around for that, and yeah, I hope you enjoyed watching, as I enjoyed watching and recording. I will catch you next time. Interesting. Okay, uh, let's see. So it's this thing. Yeah, okay, when I click this, it should end. And here we go.